Hey everyone, welcome to the Live Love Artemis podcast. We are your co-hosts Becky Rinkevich and Rafaelina Morlino, and we are a Philly-based international real estate company on a mission to educate, inspire, and serve in all things real estate. That's us. <laughs> How you doing, Raf? Awesome. We, we uh, sorry, where do we start? Where do we start? We actually haven't recorded a podcast in um, probably two weeks. We've yeah. been doing it weekly and um, it's the middle of the summer. We were on vacation. We just have life happening. So, yeah. and normally we do it on the weekends and then yeah. we like call each other, but we happen to be in the office today. So yeah. we're doing it together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We were talking about actually just having a conversation um, about limiting beliefs and how like we are speaking things into existence. So this isn't a habit that I've had. Um, I would say Becky is so much better about, like I'll say to her, Becky, imagine if, so then she'll correct me. Imagine when, imagine when, and that small habit has changed a lot. And I think um, we were talking of the other day, I was talking to Nino about, you don't realize how much pain you're in until you're out of the pain or like how, like you become numb to it. You're almost like, okay, I wake up every morning. I tell myself all these limiting beliefs and you don't even realize how far into this you've gone until you, you stop doing it. Well, a simple example of that is uh, we both just bought new computers, yes. right? So laptops. So we have our desktops, but our laptops and Raph was using a laptop that was over 10 years old. Let's just talk about that. Yes. Um, and hey, you know, if it works, great. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it type thing. Yeah. But this thing uh, is like a dinosaur, okay? Wait, no, but it, that was actually the worst part that it was old because I actually know someone who can update the software. So the software was fine. The thing weighed like- Yeah, 30, it's like 30 pounds. It was like <laughs> an old MacBook. I was actually my brother's from college that he, I was like, oh, I'm fine. And I'll take your hand-me-downs and- um, Becky's like, we're getting new computers. And I'm like, why? Mine just, my, you used it. She borrowed it. I did. Vacation. Yeah. Because mine, I had to order it from Apple because they were on like backlog because all the kids are going back to college. So they had this influx of orders. Yeah. So it was like a three and a half week week. My computer actually just died. It was only four years old. See, it, the it oldies are goodies. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so mine just died totally. I didn't even have a laptop. Yeah. So I was like, doing everything from my phone. I would have yeah. to wait to go back to my house, do work on my desktop. It was just so inefficient, so ineffective. I would get stressed out because I needed to like do stuff on the go and I didn't have a laptop. Yeah. And then Raph bought hers, mine was on his back order. So I borrowed her, her dinosaur from 2009. Uh, <laughs> And brought it to San Diego with me, and it was literally, I, oh my God, I'm like, I called her, I'm like, how did you even get anything done? It took me like four hours to write an offer, and it normally yeah. takes me 20 minutes. And, and it's not even about um, the computer. It's about the fact that I was willing to, this is my business, right? So forget about if it's, it's not self-care. This is the thing that I dedicate so much of myself to, yeah. and I'm not willing to invest in myself to have, so that you know, investing in that, in the computer and seeing what I deserve. It's not about anyone else is using it. It's just about me. Um, I always use the analogy. It's about buying expensive underwear, right? Like, because really it's not about anyone else seeing it. It's about your comfort and feeling like I deserve, like no one can see this, this is private. This is just me. And, 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 you know, and so I realized that through these small shifts, because life doesn't have the moments that we think matter which are these big big monumental moments are not right i always say like having an extraordinary marriage happens in the ordinary moments it's about the moment when you wake up in the morning does your husband like just leave the house and not kiss you good morning even though you're sleeping like it's about those ordinary things and i realize it's the same thing in business it's about my ordinary things it's about every day do I get up a half hour earlier before the baby so that I can do my hair and makeup so that I feel prepared for my day? Did I prepare my outfit the night before? Um, you know, things like that, those self-care things that we're like, that matter, right? And so um, I can truly say over the last 10, 12 weeks, um, what has shifted for me is being around Becky more. And, and it's true. Like it, you're around people who are very negative and are dream killers. And we were, you know, 
that are constantly telling you, this is impossible, and I don't see how you're going to do this, and you're constantly having to prove yourself to those people, what starts to happen is you will begin to believe them. Yeah, it's, it goes along with the, the old adage that you become the, the, like the four people that you spend the most yeah. time with. Yeah. So if you're surrounding yourself with four drug dealers and you don't do drugs, you're probably going to eventually dealing drugs. Yeah. Okay. Or if you spend your time with four people that sit around all day and play video games and like, you know, are in their house on their couch, you're probably eventually going to be doing that. But if you spend your time with four millionaires, eventually if that's the only there are the only people you're spending your time with you're probably going to be yeah. ri brought up to their level through yeah. just osmosis and being around them all the time yeah. so we, we tell them the story about the house and so so we had these clients call oh, us yeah. um and this is speaking things into existence becky yeah. and i started saying how we really wanted to begin representing clients within a certain luxury category, right? Because we had limiting beliefs about what we could sell. Could we sell a $2 million home? Could we sell 3 million, 5 million, 10 million? Could we even, could we even deserve those things? So once yeah. we decided we could, yeah. and we gave each other permission to it. Mm -hmm. Becky's like the day that I said that to her, I'm like, you know, do you think we can? She's like, uh, yeah, what do you think we're doing here? And I'm like, oh, she was so confident that I had to go along with her, right? Yeah. So these clients call, amazing couple from New York, um, own a very prosperous business. They want a, a, a suburb home. With, they, they want basically a resort, right? So we find a lot of these homes and they're going through them and I'm on searching and I come across this one home. I'm like clicking and in this one photo, it, it's, it's this beautiful property. I'll have Becky tell you more about it. And there's a horse stable and I'm like, I literally saw Becky standing in the horse. Like I was just like flipping through. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could see her in this photo. Never tell her because we're literally running at a million miles a minute, which is something that we are becoming more aware of. Our mm -hmm. gracefulness is yeah. slowing down. Um, so I envision this next day. Never have a conversation about it. Yeah. So then we come into the office and it's it's Monday mm -hmm. and um, we're just having conversations about our goals and um, our, our year to date volume sold. And we're like realizing all the, the, the properties and business we have in the pipeline. And we're going to crush our goal that we originally set yep. two months ago when we started the business, yep. which is incredible. And, um, and I, we were like, well, we need to start putting stuff on our vision board because like, we're going to be, you know, we're like, we're, maybe we're really, <laughs> maybe we're actually going to do, yeah, right. Like, we, even we were like, wait, Nina was totally on yeah, our like, sales. We're is like, that the number one? Like, I don't believe, we thought she was playing a trick on us. Like, no, no, no. And like in our pipeline is exactly to the dollar, yeah. our goal. Yeah. Like, not a, like to the dollar, yeah. our goal. So that was whatever. That yeah. Was so we're movie. like, okay, we need to get some awesome things on our vision board because we're going to be bringing in all this revenue and like yeah. what can we do with it how can we give back like what are what are some things like on our wish yeah. list that like you know me growing up poor living in a trailer park i have always dreamed about living in a beautiful part of bucks county i which is in new hope silver i've always wanted to live there yeah. the properties there are millions of dollars i would love to have my own dream horse farm with That's a so fabulous cool. house and a pool and a cottage on it that my mom could live in so I go to the barn to ride cowboy and my barn manager's there and she's like, Becky, you need to find one of your rich investors to buy this house that just came on the market in New Hope. It's $5.2 million and I, if you get him to buy it, um, I will rent it back from him and it'll be an income property and like you need to figure out how to, how to get it done. I'm like, all right, let me see the house. So she pulls it up and I'm like, this is my dream home. I'm like, it's everything I want. It's beautiful. It's it's his, the, the property, the original structure was built in 1798. Mm -hmm. And it's like history, which like, I'm sure George Washington had his troops there because that's what, you know, Washington crossing and that whole battle, like it's so historic and lovely. And it's just everything I could ever imagine. I could go on and on and on about it. And I can't, I couldn't get it out of my head. So I'm thinking about which clients I could call and say, Hey, I have this awesome investment property where it's like a typical investment property, but I'm thinking about it and I'm just like, I, I, I need it. Like I'm going to put this property on my vision board and I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but I am I mean? going to, I'm going to do it. There's so many other things. We'll talk about in another podcast that I have five, six years ago, I put it on my vision board and I wrote it down in my journal as I am statements. Like I own this, I have accomplished this, I do this. And 
most of them have happened, but when I originally wrote them, I had no idea how I was ever going to make it happen because I didn't have the connections, didn't have the money, wasn't there in my business. You had the beliefs. Yes, I had the beliefs. So I don't obviously tell Rockley no, this because it's never like, had this conversation. No. So um, we're, we're talking about, you know, putting stuff on our vision board. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, there's this amazing property that I, I came across that was brought to my attention from my, my bar so manager. in New Hope. In so. New Hope. Yeah. And, and Raph's like, wait I said, a minute. stop. <laughs> I said, wait. Because then that was like, wait, because we talked so much. I'm like, wait, did I already have this? And I'm like, wait, I know which one it is. So I pull it up and I'm like, are you ready? I turn it around. It's the same property. Same property. <laughs> I'm like, no way. So I literally said to her, look, I saw you in this picture. Wait, so show them what you So wait, let me just pull my phone up. Don't mind my busted screen. But this is the property. That's the picture that I saw her standing right there. Yep. So, so I decided to make it my screensaver. So I look at it every single day. I put the address there. I put the, the price I'm going to get it at, which is significantly lower than what's listed at, but It'll happen. it's going to happen because it's <laughs> overpriced and not many people but are it's buying. insane to yeah. think of, I think also the beauty in that, which I don't think we've spoken about is the fact that we want those kind of amazing things for each other yeah. as friends. And I think that's the one thing as women that we don't do very well. And I've been that woman before in the past, in my insecurities, um, I've carried envy. And you know, envy is the only sin, this is actually crazy, envy is the only sin that you cannot benefit from. Some of the other ones you can, uh, you know, you can, it can turn into, but envy is the only one where there's no, like, you can't get around it. There, you can't use it for good. Let me put it to you that way, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you can be greedy and then maybe that greed, you can end up donating some of it. I, I don't know. So, and even in anger, you're so angry about something and you're passionate about it that you can get that, but envy is not. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we want the best for each other. The fact that I looked at a $6 million property and the first person I thought about was my business partner, it says a lot about the relationship we have. Yeah. However, that's why it's so important to surround yourself with people who want better for you sometimes than you want for yourself. And uh -huh. we've gone through this with situations in our lives and partners and, and things that we, we had to make each other aware of, things that she had to make me aware of, clients that were mistreating me that she's like, mm, you don't need that. Mm -hmm. You don't need that person in your life. I needed to be reminded. When she turns around and tells me, you need a new laptop, you're booking a hair appointment, we're going to the spa. Lily, she just got off phone, she booked me a manicure, pedicure appointment, a spray, spray tan, tan, a haircut. Like she's like, no, you're like, we're not starting our podcast. Cause I'm like, yeah. we got it. I have a, I come from a family of self-sacrifice that you, that sacrificing yourself is, is what you need to have success. Yeah. And that's the last thing you sacrifice is yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's important to note that Raph made a great point. You need to surround yourself with, you know, others, whether it's other females or, or, or males or, or people that, that see, you know, see the potential that you have and they they inspire you and they lift you up to yes. get to the next level but they also love you and accept you for who you are now yes. so i think that's important yes. so you don't want to be with someone that's like well i'm not only going to love you or like you if you achieve if this you level of success this. right so and that's what she is for me she loves me for all of my faults and all of my flaws and <laughs> all of my insecurities but she's like I know, like, it's gonna make me tear up. You talk about, <laughs> like, I know that you're so much more than this, and I'm gonna push you to do this because I know that you can, and I know you can even surpass my expectations. And that's and how we do. And I we feel do that for her. each other because she. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the year, I wrote down. So Becky in the commercial world is like it's very. I mean, I, I've only ever called on commercial listings. It's typically always a guy, right? Yeah. It's it typically is. a it's white, male white or old man. I'm just. It's just honestly. Um, and Becky has, like, she knows she, she, I heard her negotiate on commercial listings and things. So she's, she's a pretty badass commercial realtor. I didn't have this experience. So the beginning of the year, for some reason, I was praying on my goals and I was like, God, like, where do you want me to focus? Because right at the end of the day, my life journey is based on what God has already predestined for me. So I'm not, I'm taking out the guesswork, right? So God, where do you want me to focus? Tell me, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I have Avi on my hip. I'm trying to plan my goals. It took me six friggin' months to plan the goals. I'm like, just give me an answer. And for some reason, I said commercial. I never was interested in commercial real estate, but I'm interested in business. I love seeing the idea of like commercial, what, what, what intrigues me about it. There's so many elements to it, right? You can take a building and then a really cool like gym studio on the bottom and luxury apartments. And it can end up changing the whole dynamic of a city street, yeah. which I think is like, 
I, I love seeing business can change the world, right? So that I, I'm excited about that. So I write this down. I have no idea. I am like, what, what commercial? I had no commercial clients. I had no commercial listings. So Becky's like, yeah, you're going to do more commercial real estate. And I'm like, she, but I, I wrote it without the belief that I could do it. So like now we take a look and to be fully transparent, we have over $12 million in listings just in commercial yeah. listings. And some of these listings are $4 million office buildings, $2 million five unit apartment. It's not just, they're not commercial, like little, these are real commercial deals that, so it's when someone tells you you can, but if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter what potential you see in someone. And that's, you know, you can fall in love with someone for their potential, what you think they can yeah. be, but if they do not have it within them to become what you believe in, then you're just falling in love or you're falling for that potential. With the idea of yes. who they are. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, but what all these goals and all of these amazing things, these, this, this, Horse rant. I mean, a kidney call. I mean, it literally looks like something out of Tuscany. Yeah. So, actually, we should we should have uh, that should be like the cover of the podcast. Yes. It's so so. Anyways, this what's limiting about that is that, or what my limiting belief was. I never thought in my life that I would have these things. And it's not about the things. It's about our goal this year was based on what we could contribute. Yeah. And give back yes. to the charities and the yep. organizations that are near and dear to our heart. Yeah. Um, for Rafalina, it's um, child trafficking yeah. and sex trafficking, and yes. um, and for me, and that's obviously I care a lot about that. But and mine is um, is animal abuse and horse rescue and uh, saving animals from slaughter and um, and from she being just abused. saved a horse the other yeah, day. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, we were able to you know whatever you know. I'm able to, you know, if we have a closing, you know, we'll just, you know, write checks or just send stuff in. And yesterday there was a horse that was going to probably die if the, the $5,000 vet, vet bill wasn't covered. And I was able to help with almost half the bill just That's yesterday. And it's like the coolest feeling ever. I, you know, but just a few years ago, I would have never, I would have been like, I, I, cause trust me, I could definitely use that money to help my mom or yes. pay off student loans or whatever but just living expenses living and, expenses yeah. right but i'm like you know what it makes me feel so much better that i can give back and make a difference and, and you get it back tenfold you do because of you know how it makes you feel that yeah. empowering you and so when yeah. you're limiting your beliefs you're also limiting that so if i did if we didn't believe in what we could earn then it would we wouldn't be able to donate a six we are planning on donating a six figure dollar amount this yeah. year Okay, we don't take that lightly. That's not something, but that to me is what, that's the drive. It's yeah. like, you know, I, I um, Operation Underground Railroad as something that I stumbled upon. Tomorrow is actually the March. If, you're, if you look it up, um, we'll add the link um, for um, human trafficking. And this is, Ed Milet said, the thing that breaks your heart is your life mission. And for me, mm -hmm. um, child abuse, is I, I actually can't even talk about it because when I think about the animals and the babies, they're voiceless. Yeah. So there's this feeling I get of pure suffocation almost when I think about mm -hmm. how someone can even abuse a child. Forget about, then you think about sexually. And then you think about that the United States, the country of freedom, we are the number one in you, like people using and watching and going to other countries to use children for sex. And these are babies. And I just, that to me is like, there's something wrong here. And these numbers have skyrocketed. So, I mean, we'll share more of that in a future podcast, um, but I, I, we are going to be a, 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 a leading, so, like we're gonna lead in making sure that this stops because no child should ever have to suffer that way, ever, 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 ever. And nor should it be on the internet where pedophiles can access it repeatedly. And um, so this is, these are just things that, that light our fire and fuel us. And if I was limiting myself to believe that I didn't deserve mm -hmm. what we're going to earn, I would never, no. we would never be able to touch on that. No. Like that money can end up saving one child's life. I mean, they're worth more than that, right? They're worth, but imagine the, the, the joy we'll get. Yeah.
in, yeah. in giving that and, and saving a baby from this type of abuse. Yeah. So, um, so it all goes back to your limiting beliefs yes. and that's what the basis of today's chat yeah. was about. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I urge you guys to, uh, think big, you know, take your goal and 10 X it, you know, if yeah. you want to make $50,000 this year, aim for 500,000. Yeah. And if, I mean, if, if the people that have done it can do it, there's no reason why you can't do it. And, uh, and your, whatever your donation goal is, you know, say it's $500, try to do $5,000 and, and just try to, uh, you know, think outside the box and, and don't limit your potential in any way in terms of your, the, the best person you can be in a relationship, in your business, yes. um, for your community, yeah, for your community. And, uh, it's, it's really changed our lives when we took away, I mean, we still struggle with it daily, but when we yeah. changed our mindset, uh, and, and really put no limit on our potential, or our success. It's yeah. changed our world and it's yeah. changed our lives and the people that were able to help, um, grow with us too. Yeah. So, so we can't wait to share with you where, um, who these funds go to help and, and, and how this journey goes. So, um, thank you guys for following us. If you've liked what you've seen today, be sure to like, share, subscribe as always, be sure to live fully, give selflessly and serve authentically guys. Have a beautiful, blessed day. See you next year.